Hi, you guys. I'm making this video just for my men because they like to see me. Uh, okay. I had already did a little bit of workout, but I, oh, shoot, this video. That night is messing with my computer. I hate this. I hope that'll go away. Zach Knight's messing with my computer. I really don't like him. Uh, well, I'm going to continue this workout here that I started. You know what? Let me uh, angle it down a little bit. There. That's sort of. Yeah. Uh, I already did a little bit of stretching and stuff, and I'm listening to Gerard Butler in his movie with The Ugly Truth, his comedy, it's got some nice uh, exercise music here, it's a little bit loud, let's put that down, and uh, you know, Jesus, I still haven't found that retainer that Zach and I took from me, and I could have swore that I laid it down by my fan or here on this table. And I really believe that Zach and I used his brain control on me to get me to drop it into some sort of a wormhole, and he sucked it up and he's got it. I, I don't think it's in this apartment. But what's really interesting is that you know, I, I thought for sure I had to have that in my sleep so that I wouldn't uh, uh, do bruxism or clench my teeth together because the dentist convinced me that I was doing that. But you know, in my 20s, when they first gave me a splint, I didn't believe the dentist when he told me that I did that I clenched my teeth. He said, are you getting headaches? You have sore jaw, sore jaw joints. And I said, no, no, no. I believe now it's very possible that all of the um, bone loss and the wear and tear that I've experienced on my tooth has all been yeast related. I think what's happened is right here in the jaw joints, I've lost some bone because of mineral loss because the yeast have been eating all of my nutrients, including my calcium. And so that caused the grooves here in the uh, jaw joints, which, which set my bite off. And because my bite was off, that was why I was moving my mouth around in my sleep because my jaw was trying to find a comfortable position now that the jaw joints were kind of out of whack. So I actually think that wearing the splint might have made it worse. Um, the reason I say that is because as the jaw joint started getting more and more out of alignment and the splint um, I noticed in my sleep when I wore the splint, I was clenching down on it really hard. It was like it took up space in my mouth, and I have a small mouth anyways. It took up space in my mouth that, um, that my teeth needed to get in a comfortable position. So I think it actually might have done more harm than good and actually worsened the jaw joint problem. And then, uh, so Dr. Pompura, he created that retainer for me to fix the jaw joint problem and apparently he said that my lower jaw needed to jut out more and apparently maybe it already did that anyways Jesus has allowed Zach Knight to take my splint and he wouldn't do that unless maybe I just don't need it maybe I have noticed for the past month or so that when I wear my splint it causes me to bite my tongue in my sleep and I give myself a pretty serious injury on my tongue in it it's really painful and during the day when I try to eat, the injury is so bad. And I noticed when I, because I am no longer wearing this, the uh, retainer at night, my toothache has disappeared, and that was really painful. I know my tongue injury has healed, and I don't feel any pain in my mouth anymore. And it looks like I'm even losing some weight. Um, and another thing, is all of the aches, like in my shoulders and in my back, they're better. So it appears that Zach Knight was using that retainer to worsen my yeast symptoms. 
So that, it's, it's so much better. I mean, it's not totally disappeared. I still have aches in both my shoulders and I get it here in the back and I use like my little acupuncture magnets and I put it on those spots and I guess it helps. And, and as you can see, I'm healing pretty good from my injury. Here's my pinky. There's a, like a spot where I was injured and my knees are healing better. I'm able to actually do a pretty recent workout now. Um, it's not too bad. So I'm, like Jesus said, because of my yeast infection, he said that I would heal slowly from my injuries, and he's right. He says it's going to require me to be strong and patient. But let me tell you something. I'm right now thinking that even if I find my splint, I may not wear it. Because I think it's doing me more harm than good right now. It, it feels wonderful not to have injuries on my tongue and my toothache for it to be gone. The only thing I've noticed is since I quit wearing the splint, I don't seem to need nine or ten hours of sleep anymore. I do fine with seven or eight, so it looks like the splint was making me really tired too, so that I couldn't get out of bed. Um, I, no, I'm not sleeping as well. I, um, I catch myself I, without the splint. I think my jaw is trying to realign into a new position. And I wake up a couple times, like I woke up once when I bit my tongue and it woke me up. I guess my in my sleep, my jaw joint's trying to find a adjust to not having that splint, I guess. And I'm getting enough sleep, but I wake up several times. But then I think I was doing that before. Uh, I don't know, that splint made me so tired when I got into bed that I almost that I felt like I had a tranquilizer. And I needed like nine or ten hours of sleep, so I'm, I'm getting by on less sleep, and I guess that's good. So, um, but I have noticed that I haven't really changed my diet too much, and the pounds are going down. So I even eat a Granny Smith apple and a banana, which I used to never do because I didn't want the, you know, the sugar from the fruit. And even with that, I'm going down. So a little bit. I, uh, I don't think I'm going to go down below 130, but it's nice to be right in the 134, 135 range, which is what I'm at right now. But Jesus told me not to worry about the weight. He said that's healthy weight. So I'm just showing you how well I'm healing from the wounds, and I, it, I'm able to do pretty good exercise. And I just wanted to say hi to my guys here. And Gerard Butler, I'm watching him in his movie. Um, I just, out of interest, because I think I look pretty good for 55, and I, I noticed that, you know, I started these facelift exercises in, I think it was 2009, the fall of 2009, and I haven't been regular about doing that. But even though I haven't been regular, I've noted with interest, or maybe it was 2010, I think it was 2010. Yeah, I started them in 2010, fall of 2010. I've noticed with interest that when I look at my pictures, see, when I started my YouTube channel, I had started my um, facelift exercises before I did my YouTube channel. So maybe it was 2000. Yeah, it was 2010, in the fall of 2010, when I started the facelift exercises. And I just looked at a picture at my website that I had of me when I was teaching in Christian school when I was about in the ninth year 2003. I had more wrinkles in that 2003 picture of me than in my 2010, 11, and 12. Apparently, those Facebook exercises really work. And I'm, I'm getting better at doing them more regular now, and I'm noticing that my face is looking back. So, for a 55-year-old, I look pretty incredible. Yeah. You may say, well, you don't do it down in your legs and your arms. Your skin looks pretty young there. To that is the Seroquel. I really believe Seroquel is like a um, antioxidant. or It goes in there and takes all the toxins out of the cells, and that makes the skin look younger. Because toxicity, the buildup in your cells, I believe, contributes to wrinkles. So, <laughs> the only bad thing about the Seroquel is the weight gain. But, you know, I was so skinny to begin with, so um, Jesus told me this is healthy weight gain, so I'll just take your word for it, Jesus. So, this is just mainly for my men. They like to see me. I'm not going to be sending you guys any more nudes. It's, uh, as we both know, Zach Knight steals them. 
and he claims that that you guys that you know that I gave it to him, and he's too smart with the computer, so. No, I'm not gonna, anything that I put online has got to be something that I can live with, so no more news. This is about as close to news as you're going to get you to this or a one-piece bathing suit. <laughs> I don't want, um, so, yeah, so anyways, I just want to say hi, you guys. Um, uh, look at this. I, my knees are really well healed now. I'm able to go up and down the stairs without pain. So I'm recuperating quite nice from the little push and push in that evil woman. Um, she somehow thinks that because she's fat, that makes her righteous. I mean, <laughs> where's the Bible verse that says just because you're fat, you're righteous? You know that king of Moab that the judge, was it Ehud? That he uh, stabbed because he was an evil king and needed to be, be rid of in the Bible. The Bible describes him as being a very fat man. So when they put the dagger in, it says all the dirt came out and he was fat. And he was evil. And God wanted him gone. So you can't just assume that just because somebody is fat that they're righteous. Which is the simplistic, immature way that these these thin, privileged fat chicks think like they're a, so and you know Jesus Christ himself that he doesn't worship the body and we already know that about Jesus but he himself is very you know he has tight muscles so I don't think he wants us to all to neglect our health and to not have any self-control that's that's a sin lack of self-control is a sin so we don't want to worship the body, but on the other hand, this body is, you know, if you're a born-again Christian, this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, you're supposed to take care of it. And you're not going to be taking care of it, eat junk food all day, and, you know, and end up looking like, like this. It's just, uh, it's not healthy. On top of it's the looks factor, it's not healthy. And Jesus would never want us to neglect our body to that point. He gets on Tarant all the time because he drinks for too much coffee. I've always been pretty health oriented, but sometimes what will happen is the, the devil's people will deceive me about what is truly healthy. And what's really funny is, you know, Jesus has talked to us about dentistry, and he says that the dental profession is pretty much taken over by the Jesuits. And he told me I don't even need to do my biannual cleanings. He said, Gail, just floss every day brush every day and just keep doing what you're doing and she says that'll be just fine. I thought, really Jesus? I use a Sonicare electric toothbrush and then I um, floss. I've been flossing. I floss with unwaxed dental floss. I like that better because it feels like it's getting in there and taking it out more. And Jesus recommends a hard toothbrush. A hard toothbrush with long bristles. He says that's better. He says he he asked me in Tarant, what feels better on the gun? And we said long, hard. And he said, well, that's it. That's what you should use. He said no amount of dental work is going to be able to correct mineral loss in the bone caused by a, me a medical problem like I have with yeast. He said your yeast have been eating up all your calcium, and that's why you've had bone loss, Gail. It has nothing to do with uh, all this other stuff, like periodontal disease and everything that dentists say is the reason. Now, the periodontal disease has come some of, has caused some of my gums, gums to recede, but the bone loss, where the teeth are actually shrinking, that has been mineral loss, which is a, the result of a systemic problem in my body caused by the yeast infection. So you know what? I think the ugliest part of my body is my teeth, and it's not my fault. The Jesuits did that to me because they gave me this yeast infection, and the bone loss started around 1990, around 1990, 1980, so that means I've had this yeast infection, I think it's probably for about 30 years. Anyways, I'm going to get off and let you guys see me. I've been exercising, and as you can see, I think I'm looking a little bit better. I've been doing the waist. Um, like I said, I, I haven't done waist exercises in so long, so. <laughs>